Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use SAR. This is video six, and today we're talking about effects. So let's load up a default patch here, and let's listen. Okay, we got a saw wave. So to get to our effects, let's click this image line logo right here. Now we have chorus, phaser, delay, and reverb. So let's turn on our chorus first. We have a decent sound right out of the box. And then first off, we have depth. So let's take a listen. And you can hear how those chorus is detuning the sound. All the way to the left sounds much more in tune. And that speed of the chorus is going to be determined by this rate knob. So that weird kind of fly buzzing sound you can definitely make with a chorus. Put a filter on it, a high pass. You can have something like that. So let's go back to a default and let's take a look at the phaser. So let's turn this on here. And then we have our center knob as our first one. And this is kind of selecting the location of where your phaser is basically going to live. So let's pick uh, kind of maybe around here 61% and let's play with the rate. And we can see how it's moving much faster up here on the spectrum view and also on the EQ. Then we have the depth. And then moving on, we have our feedback. And in a way, we can kind of think of the feedback as the resonance on a filter. And then the last with the mix knob, same as the chorus, is basically going to determine how much of the signal you want to be mixed in with your original sound. So let's go back to a default patch and let's take a look at the delay. So let's turn this on, and what's cool about SAR is you have an independent left and an independent right delay. And you can change these, so we can go 116 and then 416. Let's turn this mix up a little bit so we can hear it more. So let's put this back to 316 on both sides here. Now we have our feedback, so how many delays do we want? We can go a lot of delays. But just be careful with this knob because it can get out of control pretty quick. And next we have our depth. So this is going to be a little bit difficult to hear, but take a look and also look, or take a listen and also look at the spectrum view here as well as I change this knob. So here's all the way down. And all the way up. All the way down. And then halfway. With the depth a little bit higher, it almost sounds like it's a little bit closer to you at first, as opposed to not. And then next up, we have low cut and high cut. So this is basically going to determine the lows that you're going to cut from your signal that's fed into the, into the delay, and then the high cut is the exact opposite. So with the delay, you kind of want to cut off the highs because it's more so in reality. So maybe you want to cut it down a little bit. That sounds more natural than if you had it completely open. And maybe you want to cut some low end off of that as well. And then obviously your mix knob to, to determine how much of that delay you want in your signal. So next up you have your standard reverb and there's only a few controls on this. There's the decay, so how long your reverb tail is going to be. So we're really close here. There's not much decay there, but if we bring it up, it's going to take much longer for the reverb to finally decay into silence. And then same thing, we've got a high cut here, so you definitely want to bring this down a little bit to make it sound much more realistic. If it's all the way at the top, the high end buzzy sounds very fake and very computerized. So let's bring that down and cut that out. And 
And then the dampening is going to dampen the high frequencies. So let's have this up all the way at the top. Let's bring our mix up here as well. Have a big decay. And dampening all the way off. So it's definitely good to have some of this dampening on and also some of the high cut as well. And those were the effects in a nutshell. So you got four of those, not too much, but with enough work and enough time, you can make something sound pretty cool. And thank you for watching the video. The next video, we're going to talk about the MIDI modulation matrix and the arpeggiator. So see you in the next one.